Plot Summary of Blood Child by Octavia Butler On an alien planet that hasn't been named, a group of humans, called Terrans, and a part of the ruling alien race, the Tlick, live in a safe area called the Preserve. The Tlick are large, smart, and look like centipedes. They are parasites and need other animals to lay their eggs on. The Tlick of the Preserve have made a deal with the Terrans. The Tlick protect the Terrans, and the Terrans offer one male from each family to be a host for Tlick eggs. The Tlick and the Terrans depend on each other because of this arrangement, and they get along well with each other. A young Terran named Gon is visiting his family at their home. He is married to a female Tlick named Tgetoy and will soon be implanted with her eggs. Gon and his family are drinking sterile Tlick eggs, which make Terrans feel sleepy and happy, while Tgetoy talks with them. Gon's mother, Lean, doesn't want to drink the egg at first, but Tgatoy makes her. He tells her she's wasting her time and letting old age take her sooner than it should, since the eggs also make Terrans live longer. Gon's father drank eggs often and lived to be twice as old as he should have. He had three nests of Tlick eggs and four Terran children. While they are sitting, Gon thinks about how Tgatoy, as leader of the preserve, protects all Terrans from the masses of Tlick and how they all owe her a lot. Gon was promised to Tgetoy by his mother before he was even born as a sign of her gratitude. Tgetoy knows something is wrong and runs outside, where she finds Bram Lomas, a Terran who was also impregnated by a Tlick and whose eggs are ready to hatch. He is in a lot of pain and is in danger because if the eggs are not taken away before the pregnant Tlick eat through their eggshells, they will start to eat their Terran host from the inside out. Gon is told to go call for help by Tgatoy, but he says he should stay and help her. Instead, his older brother Ka should go and call for help, Gon says. Tgatoy finally gives in and tells Gon to go kill an animal for the Tlick hatchlings to eat when they are taken out of Bram Lomas's body. As Gon does this, he realizes that he is afraid to take part in what is about to happen but he can't back out at this point because things are moving too quickly. He goes back to Tgetoy with the dead animal and finds that she has taken off Bram Lomas's clothes and tied his legs. Bram Lomas is still awake because he can't be put to sleep completely because that would kill the eggs that are living inside of him. The procedure should have been done by Bram Lomas's Tlick mate, but she is nowhere to be found, so Tgetoy has to do it herself. She cuts open Bram Lomas's stomach with one of her claws and starts pulling the Tlick grubs out of him. Bram Lomas is screaming in pain, and Gon knows that what's happening can't be stopped, but he feels like he's helping Tgatoy hurt the man. Tgatoy doesn't care that Bram Lomas is in pain. Instead, she is completely focused on her job of getting eggs out of his body, licking the blood off of them as she goes. But when she sees that Gon is scared and sick, she sends him outside to throw up and catch his breath. Gon does this and then starts to walk away, not knowing where he's going. He meets Ka, who has just sent a message to Bram Lomas's Tlick friend. Ka starts to ask Gon about what happened, but Gon isn't very open about it. Ka says that when he was young, he also saw a birthing process, but the one he saw was much more disturbing, a pregnant man was ready for his eggs to hatch, and even though his Tlick mate was there with him, there was no other animal for the Tlick grubs to eat once they were taken off the Terran host, so they would die. The Tlick didn't want to risk her young to save the Terran, so she didn't cut him open. Instead, she let her young eat him while he was still alive. At last, the Terran begged the Tlick to cut his throat and kill him. The Tlick grubs then ate away at his body until they were done. Gon is horrified by this story and by what he just saw at the birth. He keeps having visions of blood-filled Tlick grubs climbing through human skin. His trust and love for Tgatoy have turned into disgust and fear. He tries to leave, but Ka won't let him go. Ka hates the Tlick, and he tried to get away from them until he realized he couldn't. Ka also knows that he will never have to be a host as long as Gon is safe. Gon comes back to the house late at night after a short fight with Ka. The rest of the house is empty so he goes into the kitchen by himself and takes his father's illegal gun out of its hiding place. He had planned to clean it, but instead he puts ammunition in it. He is in the kitchen with the gun when Tgatoy finds him. 
She knows he's upset because he says that's not how giving birth was supposed to go and gone shouldn't have had to see something like that. When Tkatoy sees the rifle, she thinks Gon might be trying to kill her, but Gon puts the gun to his own head. He is upset that he didn't get to choose whether or not to carry Tkatoy's eggs, and he doesn't want to just be her host animal. He thinks that killing himself is the only way for him to choose for himself. He wants Tkatoy to tell him not to go through with it. Tkatoy says he would rather get Gon's sister, Xian Hoa, pregnant. Xian Hoa likes Tkatoy and is willing to help. Gon agrees at first, but soon realizes that he is using Xian Hoa, whom he really cares about, as a shield, just like Ka does. Gon stops Tkatoy as she is leaving to go to Xian Hoa. He tells her that she has to get pregnant by him, just like they had always planned. Gon tells Tkatoy that she has to leave the rifle in the house, even though it scares her. Tkatoy wants to take the rifle away because it is illegal and could hurt her future children. Gon wants Tkatoy to take the same risk that he is, and he wants her to treat him as a partner and an adult, not as a subject or something that belongs to her. Tkatoy agrees in the end. She gives up control and takes the risks to show Gon that she is willing to trust him. They go to Gon's room together. He takes off his clothes and lies down with her, and she puts an egg in his tummy. As they lie there together, Gon says that he didn't really hate Tkatoy, but he was afraid of her and what she would do to him. He also says that he was afraid of losing her or letting her go to someone else because he wanted her for himself. Tkatoy is happy about this and says she will never leave him alone like she did with Bram Lomas. She will keep him safe. About the author Octavia Butler grew up in a simple African-American family where she was the only child. Her mother worked as a housekeeper and her father was a shoe shiner. He died when she was seven years old. Butler had a hard time reading as a child and had crippling social anxiety. This made her childhood both lonely and full of teasing. To make up for it, Butler spent a lot of her free time at a public library reading books and magazines. It was there that she fell in love with writing and telling stories. She started writing her own stories when she was 10 and talked her mother into buying her a typewriter. During college, Butler kept writing a lot, but she didn't have much success. She worked a lot of different jobs to make ends meet while keeping up a strict writing schedule. During this time, her stories were written in the style of popular science fiction at the time. They had simple plots and characters who were mostly white men. In the 1960s and 1970s, when the black power movement and national conversations about race and hierarchy were happening, Butler started writing more diverse characters and using her stories to criticize existing gender, class, and ethnic power structures from the point of view of a black woman. With her unique point of view, Butler started selling short stories and novels. By the late 1970s, she was able to make a living by writing full-time. With her short story Speech Sounds, which she wrote in 1984, Butler won her first Hugo Award. Bloodchild won another Hugo the next year. In the Amazon jungle, she did research for her popular Xenogenesis trilogy of books, which she wrote over the next five years. In the 1990s, after her books Parable of the Sower and Parable of the Talents came out, the John D. and Catherine T. MacArthur Foundation gave her almost $300,000. She was the first science fiction author to get this award. In 2005, she was given a place in the International Black Writers Hall of Fame at Chicago State University. The next year, at the young age of 58, Butler died suddenly of a stroke. Hope we summarized it fully and you liked it. Please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel so that we are motivated to create more videos.